Most neuronal migration occurs during embryogenesis, but in the adult brain, interneuron precursors or neuroblasts arise in the ventricular subventricular zone and then migrate tangentially along a defined path called the rostral migratory stream towards the olfactory bulb, where they differentiate and integrate into local olfactory circuits. Linda van Elsten colleagues at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory are interested in the function of DOC7, a member of the DOC180 family of RAC CDC42 guanine nucleotide exchange factors. We uh, had previously observed that this protein DOC7 plays actually a critical role in the context of cortical uh, neurogenesis during embryogenesis. And we had seen that it there actually governed the decision-making of a progenitor cell to stay a progenitor or to commit to become a neuron through a process which is called interkinetic nuclear migration. So that prompted us to look to see whether it serves similar function in postnatal adult neurogenesis. Van Elston colleagues, including co-first authors Shinichi Nakamuta, Yu Ting Yang and Chia Lin Wang, found that DOC7 was expressed in neuroblasts present in the ventricular subventricular zone and rostral migratory stream of postnatal and adult mice. But then we discovered that it actually is not required for the genesis of these neurons, but that it actually really is important for the migration of these neurons to the olfactory pulp. Because if you deplete DOC7, they get largely stuck on the rostral migratory part. Ventricular subventricular zone neuroblasts migrate by undergoing cycles of leading process extension followed by the forward movement of their nucleus and cell body. How these two steps are coordinated is unclear. Neuroblasts lacking DOC7 often formed aberrant branched leading processes, suggesting that DOC7 regulates leading process growth and stability. But, using a molecular replacement strategy, Nakamuta et al. found that DOC7 actually controls both steps of the neuroblast migration cycle. If you deplete DOC7 and you add back the wild type, you can rescue migration. But if you now add back mutants with different regions, we could actually dissect that this protein controls both critical steps. It first is critical for the extension and the stabilization of the leading process that first happens. And then it plays a second role in the forward movement of the soma. DOC7's catalytic DHR2 domain was required for the growth and stability of the leading process, probably by activating the same RAC and microtubule dependent pathway by which DOC7 promotes axon elongation. In contrast, DOC7 mutants that contain the DHR2 domain but lack a different region of the protein were able to support leading process extension but not the forward movement of the cell soma. And we found that that region interacts with this protein called P116 RIP, which the function kind of was a little bit mysterious in the in vivo context. So it has been implicated in ectomizing contractility, but people haven't studied it in the context of migration or really in an in vivo scenario, what does it do? The actin cytoskeleton propels somal translocation by forming a cup-shaped structure at the rear of the cell. This structure failed to form in neuroblasts lacking P116 RIP, as well as in cells where wild-type DOC7 was replaced with a mutant version unable to bind this actin regulatory protein. The migration of these cells was thus impaired, even though they could form a normal leading process. DOC7 therefore drives the tangential migration of adult neuroblasts along the rostral migratory stream by controlling both leading process extension and somal translocation. And it actually does so by acting on two different such skeletal elements. For the extension and the stabilization of the leading process, it does it by acting on the microtubule network. Whereas for the forward movement of the cell soma, it actually controls actin dynamics at the rear of the cell, and you get this cup-like F-actin structure that helps push the soma forward 
to then coordinate this movement, which is tightly coupled. So what do Van Elst and colleagues want to investigate next? So once the neurons arrive in the olfactory bulb, but they differentiate into interneuron types. And instead of tangential migration, they switch to uh, radial migration. Does it affect that aspect? And the other thing that we don't know is that presumably it affects the migration globally of this neuroblast. But recent discoveries have uh, shown that in the VSCZ, there are already different subtypes of progenitor cell that gives rise to different subtypes of interneurons in the olfactory bulb do affect them all. So these are all outstanding questions that we try to tease apart. For now, though, you can learn more about the dual role for DOC7 in the tangential migration of interneuron precursors in the postnatal forebrain in the paper by Nakamuto et al., published in the December 4th, 2017 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.